Welcome to the April 30th, 2015 meeting of the Hadley School Committee. Uh, we are meeting tonight to have our public hearing presentation on the fiscal year 2016 school budget. And I think with that, I will turn it over. Good evening. This evening, Chris Desjardins will be presenting the FY16 proposed budget for Hadley Public Schools. First, we can start off with uh, just an explanation. What is the school budget? A lot of people think it's just numbers, um, but really it's more than that because when you set up the budget, you set it up with your plan in mind for the next year, um, and the budget will support that. So in some ways, it is the financial roadmap um, for your educational priorities. What are those priorities? Whoops, two. Uh, first one, we want to narrow the achievement gap between our high-need students and other students. Uh, the next one would be honing the curriculum and instructional strategies to focus on frequent formative assessments. There's a mouthful. In order to respond quickly to student learning needs, infusing technology into our instructional strategies in ways that enrich and expand the curriculum, and expanding the system of positive behavior interventions and supports to foster academic growth and promote social and emotional well-being. budget's jumpy today. So we have just a little overview of the budget. Uh, the increase is 4.8 percent for FY16. These increases are due to uh, the purchasing of curriculum and instructional materials aligned to state standards. The wage increases which would be step and lane increases in the cost of living adjustment, professional development, educational and media technology replacements and repairs. Uh, the creation of a new special education program to serve students with significant behavioral and emotional needs, and the increases in special education tuitions and the increase in the electricity cost for next year. Normally, we'd have the increase in the oil cost as well, but fortunately this year we had a pretty good sized decrease. So next slide is just a budget, budget trend analysis showing where we've been for the past few years. Uh, you can see there's uh, obviously an upward trend here. And if you look at the increases at the bottom of the slide, you can see that really for the most part they've been hovering in the four and a half to five and a half percent range. Um, FY16 just a hair under 4.8 percent. Um, again, pretty much in line with what we've seen in the past few years. And again we just have um, uh, kind of a pie chart here showing where the money in the budget goes. You can see the majority of it is the first four items on the uh, right hand side. Those are where all the salaries reside. So you can see we've got uh, about 69% of the budget is in that area alone. Uh, this is kind of a, a summary of the budget. The budget itself is about 10 pages long. Um, we've just kind of broken it down into the main categories just so you can compare the FY15 budget to the FY16. Uh, and you can see really not a lot of difference between the two years, really, if you think about it. Um, the biggest change that we had is in the in instructional support services. That would include the special ed tuition. Um, so that one has a, a kind of a big increase. A lot of them actually showed some decreases uh, from the prior year. And this may be because of items like we may have bought textbooks last year, we're not buying them this year. so. You know, we're going to see a decrease in the budget in that area. Um, but again, you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, the budget is $7.396 million, an increase of about 4.8% uh, from the prior year. <clears throat> We've got an FTE analysis. This is slightly different than what we showed at the select board meeting a couple of months ago in that we added one additional teacher, that is the special ed program that we just instituted a couple of meetings ago. Um, and so we just updated the slide to show the increase in that teaching position. So the budget is made up of a number of resources and I just broke them down here. You can see the school choice number. We came down $10,000 from what we spent in FY15. The grants is actually a pretty decent amount, about $60,000 less. Part of that is the um, circuit breaker money, which there was a decrease in the circuit breaker funding for this year. 
and we just don't anticipate carrying over as much at the end of this year as we did last year. So we have less available, and therefore you'll see a decrease in that. Uh, the revolving account is the preschool revolving account, and we take a certain amount of expenses for the elementary school, items such as heat and light, um, also the supplies in the building, and we take either, say for heat and light, we take the percentage of square feet that the preschool takes up in the old uh, total school building. For items such as supplies, we take the number of students in the preschool program as a percentage of the total students in the elementary school, and we allocate those particular expenses to the preschool program. And so you can see it's pretty close to what it was last year, not a heck of a lot of difference there. Um, the local contribution amount, which is the money that comes from the town, is $6,467,519. Um, again, for the total budget of $7,396,393. I think we might have had 14 cents in there too, but we can probably uh, do some rounding. So we've got some demographic information for you. Just the uh, district enrollment on this slide. And again, you can see at the top of the page, it actually goes from FY15 to the right. So uh, if you look, you can see we've definitely had a decrease in the number of students in uh, Hadley Elementary. It was 397 students in FY11, bumped up a little, minute, a little bit in 12, and then it's been declining since then. And we've had the same type of thing in Hopkins Academy, where we've had um, the high point in FY11 and it's come down, kind of leveled off the last couple of years uh, at Hopkins. But again, you can see uh, the decrease in students from 710 in FY11 to 620 in FY15. At the bottom of the slide, you can see how the, the percentage of uh, change that we've had. And it certainly is nice to see in FY15, we only had uh, a decrease of about a half a percent. So certainly better than we saw the couple of years prior to that. One bit of information that may help people understand some of the fluctuations in the elementary school is if you look at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, the school and district profile for Hadley, anybody in public can look at that and can see enrollments in any school year or fiscal year that you choose. And in fiscal year 11 and 12, we also have very, very high pre-K numbers. And because we have no more than 20 students in a kindergarten class and a 10 to 1 student to adult ratio in our kindergarten classes, when we have a prepaid class that exceeds that 40 students, then those students will um, naturally, they, they would then not necessarily, they may have choiced into the preschool program. They're not Hadley residents and we don't have room for them. So they're choosing Hadley for early education and care and then they weren't in preschool. So if you look at the demographic data, you can see in a couple of years, very large pre-K numbers. So, Andy, to be clear, those numbers then include pre-K. Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have the school choice numbers, and you can see a dramatic increase in the school choice in, which is the dark blue line on the top, mm -hmm. uh, from 78 in FY14 to 99 in FY15. So, at $5,000 a student, obviously. Uh, you know, that's a major amount of money that we brought in. Um, and you can see really with the um, school choice out, it's leveled off pretty nicely. Uh, it was going up. You can see from FY11 to FY13, we had quite a big increase. And it's really leveled off since then, down a bit in FY14 and then up a bit in FY15. But uh, if you look at the spread between in and out, that's certainly something we want to see as wide as possible. And it's nice to see that we've had a very wide spread between the two in FY15. And this is from the 10-1-14 count, what we call our October 1 count. Since then, our, actually, our incoming school choice uh, has increased. Um, and I believe we've... Uh, no, so we've had no Hadley students choice out to my knowledge this year, but I know of one actually that just occurred, and this number's higher. It's over 100 now on choice in. This slide just shows uh, a breakdown of some of the populations in the Hadley School District. Uh, if you look at the blue lines, which are the English language learners, you can see it's pretty flat. Uh, it's been 3% every year, 4% um, in FY15, so not a lot of change there. Students with disabilities would be the red line on the chart. 
Um, again, it was 13%, dipped down to 11 for the past three years, then up to 13 um, in this year. The largest increase that we've seen are the low income numbers, uh, and that was 17, 18% really for the last four years, and it bumped up to 24% this year. So um, it could be, is low income, is that um, free and reduced lunch? So it could be a, a couple of factors, you know, certainly the economic situation we're, we're in where it might have just been put off for so long and um, is just kind of hitting right now. Or just the fact that um, I know that Diane Zach has been, um, you know, basically looking at the, the numbers for um, school lunch. And if there are students that have consistently owed money, um, then she does send something to the parents for the free and reduced program. So that might be something that's um, skewing these numbers as well. But it's not really skewing them. What it's actually doing is just showing a more realistic picture than what we've seen before. Per people spending in the region. Uh, so we have about one, two, three, eight school districts here. Uh, one of them being Hadley. And you can see the spending per pupil from FY14, which is the most recent full school year that we have available to us. And you can see how it starts with Amherst at $19,541 per student. And it goes down. Um, Hadley is in this area, the second to the bottom, um, just slightly ahead of Belchertown in per pupil spending. And again, this is really just a breakdown of what Hadley's been for the past seven years. Uh, again, it has been, for the most part, an upward trend. Uh, we had a, a little bit of a dip in 2011 and another one in 2013, but you can see a mostly positive slope uh, in this trend. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the state average, uh, and you can see that Hadley has consistently been below the state average for per-pupil spending. Um, all of these are taking taken from the DESE website. Again, we want to make sure that we take it from there, so that way when we're comparing it with other districts, we're comparing apples to apples. And that's the end of our program. Do you have any questions, comments? I'm, I'm wondering if, um, just because I've seen a little bit about it in the paper recently, and maybe you could help speak to it to um, clarify this, if school choice funds brings in $5,000 per student, but our expenditure per pupil is, as, as shown on the chart, 12179 per student, why do we school choice in every year? Okay. So Chris, you can probably assist me too if I don't say this in a way as clearly as possible. So the per pupil spending amounts are taken from something called an end of year report that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education requires every school district to fill out, and Chris does this for us annually. And that end of year report captures all of our expenditures, essentially everything that we spent in every single category, and it also would then include the amount of money that the town charges as part. Town so town, town expenses. Town Portions of the town accountant, portions of the town treasurer's salary are charged back to the school department. All of those expenditures are then essentially distributed across, or, or your denominator, or I just did this backwards, you're done, they're divided among the, um, all of our student body. And so people typically think that, all right, we're paying out of pocket, like a child is sitting in front of us and we're writing a check for $12,000. It, the reality is that, as I said, if we have a classroom and if another student enters, most of the expenses associated with, with educating the student, they're fixed expenses. The lights are on, the heat is on, the building is getting repaired, the teacher is being paid. Unless we have to incur an additional expense in terms of electricity, in terms of a salary, in terms of, one might say, well, you have to give the child a book. Sometimes we have additional books. Like we don't, rarely does a child come in that we may have to go out and, and buy um, an extra, I mean, perhaps we have to buy a book, but we don't have to go out and incur major expenses. So where we get that per pupil expenditure amount has to do with how we fill out our end of year report. And they take our student census and divide that into our expenditures. And we, can, we also have an analysis of by category what we're spending overall and by pupil. 
but hopefully people can visualize that when another student walks into the classroom, it's not as though, oh my goodness, we're about to spend $12,000. Or the expenses, right. think of your classroom. Those expenses, we've already incurred them. We've encumbered the salary, we've encumbered the administrator's salary, we're using the same amount of electricity, we're, and so that does just turn into revenue for right. us. So kind of piggybacking off of Monday's meeting, which I know wasn't mm -hmm. here, but I saw that one of the topics was number of spots per mm -hmm. grade. That's really, <coughs> so we're not trying to open another classroom no. for school choice. We're trying to fill the seats that we have. Where, precisely, where there is space, and this is why the school committee, I, I'm not trying to speak on behalf of the school committee, but I was appreciative of the degree of deliberation and thought and the conversation about, well, how do we make sure that we don't just say, all right, we'll take as many as we can get. Now, and that's where we do ask teachers, and we talked about a weighted kind of formula for looking at how many students does it make sense to have in a classroom so that we don't, um, so that we can ensure that we can provide the kind of individual attention and quality education that the students need, and so that it makes sense all around, programmatically, and uh, so that it makes sense. I have nothing to add. Thank you so much. Do I pass? Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions from the committee? Are we, uh, does that conclude the presentation, Chris? It does. Okay, so um, comments or questions from the public? We do have public here. Christine, Sorry, Colin, any you. questions? I don't have any at this time. Well, thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, then I believe our action is to um, entertain a motion to approve the fiscal year 2016 school budget. Would somebody like to make that motion? I'll make a motion to approve the school budget for 1915 for $7,396,393.14. Great, do I have a second? I second the motion. Okay, and we do need to vote. Uh, Grant? Uh, yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Humera, Fashad? Yes. yes. And myself, yes. I don't know if we needed to go through all four, but I'm glad you did. There we go. Are always nice. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, our next meeting date, June 1st, 2015. It's shifted because of the holiday. Mm -hmm. I uh, believe that concludes our meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, I don't think we need to vote to adjourn, do we? <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Thank you.